Hey, this is Terry B, and I have been traveling across the country on this bicycle, and I want to tell you a little bit about it. We are at the end of week two. We are in Michigan. We started in Brooklyn, New York, and we've been living off of our bicycles. This is the number 22 Drifter, and I want to show you how I have the stream set up on here. So I'm going to start with the cockpit. So on the stream setup, we have a live view, which is a cellular encoder, bonder. We have one, two, three different modems on the back here. We have a Sony AS300 for the actual camera. So this is an HDMI and a power cord, and then this is an audio in. Running down the bike, comes down the top tube, and it runs into the encoder here. And then I'm running Rode Wireless Goes, and one here is the, uh, this is the receiver for these wireless mics. And I have one and two transmitters. So I can give one to Sean while I'm on the road. So back to the front, these are the Redshift kitchen sink bars, the Redshift Sports. They come with this top bar. And what I've done was I've taken this quad lock. This is their new 360 quad lock set. And I built this kit myself. So what this is is a wireless charger. Actually, I actually have it unplugged right now. And the reason why I use the wireless charger instead of plugging in my phone is it not only holds, you can see now the blue light's on, so it's charging. Not only does it hold my chat phone, and this is the live stream, this is what the chat looks like. Not only does it hold my phone here and lock it in place, it now keeps it charged cable free. So when I want to charge my iPhone, which I'm filming this with, I can put it on here and charge both phones because they both have quad lock cases. So it's a really nice thing to have on this trip. I used their 360 set and I built this my, myself. So you can get the, inst uh, the uh, quad lock 360 kit. And I basically got this um, bar mount with a 90 degree adapter. And it's, I have it loose so I can turn it a little bit to angle the chat up and down and then I just got the wireless charger quad lock and then I can keep both of my phones charged without having to carry a bunch of cables and it also puts the chat right in front of my bike so I can respond in real time and still kind of be safe on the bike it's all the way out in the front and the only way I could really do this is with this quad lock 360 kit along with these redshift kitchen sink bars with this really big piece and with all the extra space I just zip tied the uh, live view to its case around the stem so it's kind of just floating here in this area and it's pretty protected there actually underneath it like I said I have the two modems this is a Nighthawk and this is an Insego not that good of a modem, but I had to buy it. One crapped out on me on the road. And then the other one's here. This is for Verizon here. Underneath, I have a Max Oak battery. And this is running power. Right here, this DC port runs power to this DC port for the Live View. The Live View also has an internal two hour battery. But this, will, this battery allows me to stream on the bicycle for eight hours plus. So this one battery charges keeps this charged, keeps this charged, keeps the live view charged, the phone charged. And then I also have a spare cable here that I use for alerts for the stream with this JBL Clip 3. And I use this cable here and I can use this cable to charge the Wahoo, charge the speaker, charge the um, trans or the receiver for the, the road. By the way, I'm using the Rode Wireless Go 2 set right now for this audio. And uh, that's how I get the stream working 
The other thing I wanted to mention on the front of the bike before I go is this is a Jack the Bike Rack. And this rack clips to the bars. They have a, uh, they had a, what was it? It wasn't a GoFundMe, but it was a uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo, whatever, one of those funding projects. So these are actually uh, shipping soon, but they sent me an early, there it is, Jack the Bike Rack. They sent me an early version. And so what I've done was I brought it with me and all it does is hold the battery. So these things, it's really nice because it has a little bit of flex to it. Like I don't mind this, this is really good for the weight that I have on here. And all of this stuff just sits on here and it, it really doesn't feel like much on the bike. So I've modded it a little bit. So what I've done was I'm running this front hub here is a generator hub that I'm borrowing from a buddy. So this generates power. It runs, if you can see here, let me go around this way. It's running power from here and it goes up into this fork. This is a whiskey fork with these bolt-ons here. And then the power cable comes out here, around here, and then I just electrical taped it to the jack the bike rack, put a little knot here so it doesn't dangle around too much. And then it runs here to this light. So if I was to turn this on, I can't really do it <laughs> and spin the wheel, this light would turn on. But not only does it turn on, it's said to, there's also a USB out on the back so this also charges devices. And what I do is I have this cable now plugged in and this runs around to this side of my bike here where I have a spare charger for emergencies. And let's see, this was dead this morning. Let's see what it looks like now. Full four bars. So this Dynamo Hub is a great thing for bike packing. So shout out to Amir for letting me borrow this wheel set for this big trip. So this is a dynamo that's running power up to the top. And then also with the Jack the Bike Rack, um, I have used, it has this black pad here. And what I've done was I've, I've taken all the cables, you can see on this side, and it kind of looks like a rat's nest of cables there. There's a lot of cables going on, right? I have them all bundled inside this black Jack the Bike Rack pad and just to keep the cables contained in here and it works really well to kind of have a, a quick cable management because I don't want to zip tie everything down too tight because things change, things move. Uh, the bike gets packed and repacked every day so I need to have it semi-flexible. So on top of that, that's the front end and it allows me, this is basically the command center. I can see the status of the stream here. I can see what modems are working, what bit rates I have. And then here on the chat phone, I can swipe over and this is my server here where I send my the stream to. So I can control everything from here. Make sure I can change scenes. I can make sure what's, what is happening on the stream here. I can even see a thumbnail. I can pull up Twitch if I wanted to. And then here I can see all the modems. So everything I need to do, including audio, I can do while I'm pedaling the bike, which is a major plus when we're trying to get in an average of 80 miles a day on the bike. We don't have time to stop and fuss with the stream too much, even though it does happen. <laughs> if you watched a couple streams, you know it happens. So that's the whole stream setup. And now I want to talk to you about the rest of the bike. So this is the number 22 Drifter. Like I said, this is a new fork. This is a whiskey fork. I got it so I can carry bottles on the front of the fork. So I have two Nalgene's here. This one's running a, um, a filter on the front. And what this does is, this was given to me by Matthew B. Shout out to Matthew B, if you see this video. This is a filter. So I can either put hot, put coffee grounds on the bottom here and pour hot water in here and have hot coffee. Or how we've been using it since it's so hot is I drink the water to about half and then we pour coffee grounds into it, let it sit overnight and then we pour it out and we have cold brew in the morning. Other side, we have water there. I have two water bottles from King Cog. I have, uh, let's work my way around here. Uh, I have a Thompson seat post. I used to have a dropper on this bike. I took it off so I'd have less moving parts and less things that will break on the trip. I think it's smart so far. Um, a Physique Argo saddle. 
and then let's go down to the drivetrain here. I'm running these old SRAM Force cranks. I think they're a couple generations old. I have these wild ass one up um, pedals. Um, I'm running flat pedals while riding across the country, and you might ask yourself why. Well, I'm riding across the country in sandals. Check out these tanned legs <laughs> and feet. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm running flat pedals for comfort because it's hot and I'd rather not carry a bunch of laundry with me On to the chain ring. This is the brand new Arn um, chain ring. This is a 32 tooth in the front and in the back I'm running an Eagle drivetrain. So this is 10 to 52 With electric shifting. This is a SRAM X01 electric derailleur um, What else can I tell you about this? I brought three batteries for the derailleur. This is number two. We had to, I had to change this as soon as I crossed the border pretty much into Canada. I had to change this battery. So I'm on the second one now. I have another one that's charged and then I can charge everything up. Um, now on to the bags. What's holding most of my stuff, let's start in the front. The front, I have a feed bag. So I can easily grab snacks. Right now I'm rocking with the Sour Skittles. Um, and I usually put this phone in here that I'm using to film this. And then in the other bag, I have a point and shoot. This is a Contax T2. Some color film, I'm not sure. I think it's some Fuji stuff right now. Like I said, this side holds the battery. Spare cables for the iPhone. And then this is an outer shelf mini, it's like a half frame bag. This allows me to hold, have water bottles and still store things in here. Um, I put things in here that I kind of use all the time. Right here is the audio. I need to use that quite often. I have some chapstick from Japan. <laughs> um, we have some chain lube, it's dry. And sunscreen, which I don't like to use, but I have been using it lately because we've been out here. I also have some Dyna plugs, shout out to them. Um, had to use one so far. And I have my tent poles in there as well. I'm running a, a regular REI tent setup, so I don't have small poles or anything. And then on this side is just essentials, stickers, wallet, kind of in a waterproof zip, zipper bag, just in case it rains to keep everything nice and dry. And then on the back, before I get to the bags, let's talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> This is what's holding the camera together. This is a bunch, this is a big web of volet straps. Uh, wish they were a sponsor of this trip because I use the shit out of them. Um, tons of volet straps all over there holding this in place. This is a road boom pole with a jobby like adjustable um, camera, quarter, uh, quarter 20 camera mount on the on the top with a level and then we have mini volet straps holding the cables down I got some extra paracord shout out to Eric Otto for this um, just in case something I need it so I have it here ready to be used and then extra volet straps here on the side to kind of pull the camera over my left shoulder and then I've already unclipped this <laughs> but uh I got my New York Terry license plate JDR gave me this got to show that it's getting really bent up pretty cool now let's talk about the bags on the back these are what really have saved us on this trip um, wouldn't be able to do the bike camping we're doing without these rear bags and tail fin came through heavy and uh, sent us a set so this is the 22 liter this is the ultra durable bag and the way that this tail fin set setup works is that it just clips on and off these panniers. Let me see if I can do it with one hand. So inside here, as you can see, we've put miles on this, so everything's really, really dirty. So here's a switch right here. Flip this switch up. And then with one hand, I should be able to just pull this off. Just like that. So that's one bag. And they just kind of clip onto these little carbon rods. And these rods run down to an axle. And they give you, 
They give you an, um, a universal axle to clip onto. And I also installed, these are fender mounts on my frame. I'm not quite sure if my frame can hold the weight of the tail fin. I've never verified that, but I, I assume a fender mount and a, and, a, um, and a rack mount are similar on the bottom. But we, I have installed this just in case I have issues with the axle. I have my old axle for my bike here with me as well. So I can swap this up here. And what it'll do is it'll angle this up a little bit differently, but it'll still work. So that's just there, just in case. Now let me take the other side off. All right, there we go. Both bags off. And this is what a lightweight tail fin setup would look like. I have mine loaded a little crazy. I have my sleeping bag in here intentionally puffed up like that. That way it helps uh, the camera's monopod. It helps it just to have something to, to press on. If not, the camera will just kind of flop around more than it already does. So it's just kind of stuffed up to uh, have something to lean on. But this is what a minimal tail fin setup could look like. You can easily just rock this for a day trip. And the benefits of this over a bag on the rear, which I have one of those two ones that connect to the bottom here, is that when you stand up and pedal, this is connected to your axles down here. So you're, it's not gonna sway around when you try to stand up and ride. <clears throat> um, so after this, now I wanna show you what's in the bags. All right, and all three of my tail fin bags are now empty. So everything I'm carrying from the bags are emptied out and this is everything I have on the bike. So I'll start with the first pile, which is bicycle things. It's the smallest pile. I guess it's bicycle things and film. I got a helmet, got the uh, derailleur battery charger, my ex extra axle, dyno plugs, more dyno plugs, tube, valves, batteries, um, brake pads, some film, some dry lube, extra little cord, uh, a new GX chain, which I need to put on soon. And that's it for the bike goods for now. I have some sealant in that bag as well. And then this is the electronics, <laughs> it's fucking crazy, to keep the stream uh, going. So first things first is all the repetitive things. These are all the exact HDMI and USB 3 cables to run to the back of the camera. I have an extra modem battery in here and I have some extender cables. There's an old modem that has already died on the trip. And then I have the same setup here with a ethernet cable in there as well. Got some zip ties in case I need them to uh, zip anything down. Um, when we're in a hotel, I got this charger guy. Speaking of chargers, I got this anchor block system with three quick charges. The reason why I have that is because I need to plug in four of these every time we stay somewhere with power because I have four Max Oak batteries. One, two, three, and then the one on my bike, four. Sean's helping me carry two of these, so I'm only carrying two at a time. He's carrying two for me. Thank God for Sean. Um, these weigh about four pounds a piece. <laughs> And then I have two sets of Rode Wireless Goes. I'm using one right now, like I said. So they're labeled A and B set. This is the bag for the second set. I have a spare backup camera, just in case the uh, AS300 stops working. This one is just what I had laying around, so hopefully that'll work. That's an ARC-02. Not as wide, but at least we'll have a picture. And then this is my bath goods, minus a towel. So, just regular old stuff, some stuff I stole from the hotel. <laughs> I borrowed it, uh, toothpaste, all that shit, sunscreen, food stuff, foldable bowl, Sean bought me this, emergency blanket, chamois butter, some bug shit, baby wipes, which is important when you camp and you don't have a shower, uh, a bag, you never know when you might need a bag to waterproof something, 
even though the tail fin bags are waterproof, I use this for the ends of all of my cables on the front of the bike there. <laughs> so when, the, when I put all this stuff away for weather, I put all the ends of the uh, cables in the bag and then I wrap a volet strap around it. And then I put this bag around the camera on the back of the bike like this. And just pop it on like that. And then I cinch it tight with a volet strap. It's been, it's been, uh, it's been great so far. <laughs> We've had to use it a couple times. All right, and then this is the camping stuff. So I have my tent poles, sleeping bag, tent, and my sleeping pad. Pretty simple stuff. And then I have a headlamp there. And then the last thing is my clothing. I'm packing a little more than I want, really. There's a little more things than I really need here, but uh, this is just what I have. I got some lightweight, like, rolly pants. I got a wool long sleeve base layer, some chrome shorts. I have this shirt I picked up along the way from Herkimer, New York. This is Dick's Wheel Shop. You bust them, we adjust them. <laughs> This was an extra piece I got along the way. This is a SPF 50 um, Mountain Hardware. Long sleeve shirt with a hood. This helps on the really sunny days when there's no shade. I have a rain jacket from Mission Workshop. Two pairs of wool socks for these here sandals. So they're divided up the big toe from the rest of the toes. Not the best for fashion, but they're functional. And then I have two pairs of mash gloves, one that I cut the fingers off that I use during the day, and then I'm leaving some with the fingers on in case it gets cold. And then I have a mash. This is a day bag. This flips out into a backpack. Here, let me show you. Sean has his already out, so. It turns into a backpack like this. Pretty nice to have. And then this is the slow squad stuff that JDR made before the trip. This stuff will be launching soon for, for order, for pre-order. So we got the Slow Squad, pretty sick, Slow Squad Taurus Division. This is the long sleeve on the front. It's got Bart with the with a dead head. This is Slow Squad Taurus Division, east to west. Stay safe, stay slow. This is like the mileage and everything. Um, we got the shirt, we got some sick shorts with a back pocket, and then it's got the little hotline hit on the back left leg. Front pocket's got some more piece hits with the slow squat on the front, and it's a drawstring. I use these to chill in after I'm done, uh, usually in a hotel. These are all made by Endo Customs, by the way, really nice stuff. And then there's a dark short sleeve version of the other shirt I just showed you. Here, I forgot to show you. It's got the, it's got the slow mark here, <laughs> and then we got the bib. Uh, these are the uh, slow squad bibs. It's got the little slow squad dude, and these are pocket bibs. So two pockets on a pocket on each leg, and then on the back, it's got the hotline hit, and it's got the hits here, the peace sign, and the yin yang, and that has two pockets up here on the back. And I have two bibs. I'm wearing some right now. And then I'm wearing this Patagonia fly fishing shirt that Matthew B gifted me. All right, so now I'm going to set up the tent and uh, end the video. So let's set up the tent. So I am not a fan of using a rain fly unless it's raining. I love having the sky wide open and visible. So I'm only setting it up tonight with no rain fly because we don't have rain in the forecast. If it does rain magically, I usually keep the bag with the rain fly um, with me, um, just in case. You know, and I can just pop it on real quick. I've had to do that already. 
Uh, not on this trip, but I've had to do it. It's not fun, but I'd rather risk it and have an open tent than be closed in. What's the fun of camping when it's when you can't see the stars, you know? Okay. This tent is from REI. This is the Passage One. I'm not an outdoor uh, know-it-all person at all, so um, this tent's pretty cool. The one thing about this tent, though, is that for bikepacking, you usually want a tent that has shorter poles, so it's easier to carry. But because I have the frame bag from Outer Shell, the poles fit right in that middle bag, so it's not that big of a deal for me to just hold them in there. Um, this is a freestanding tent. I don't even have to uh, use stakes for this if I don't want to, which is great because it pops up really fast. And when you're bike camping and you're setting up, or bike packing and you're setting up your tent, you know, more multiple times a week, it kind of turns into a drag if you can't set your tent up quick, especially if you're tired from riding 80 miles. So this tent is really nice. It sets up super quick. And it's done. That's it. Probably gonna doesn't look super even, but Better than nothing. Sean took the good spot. He always does. <laughs> Fucking Sean. All right. So like I said, I usually just throw this stuff really close by. This is the Rainfly pillows. The next is the pad. I just bought this pad. This is uh, the Sea to Summit. I don't know which one this is. It's their nicest. It's the nicest fucking pad though. I had to order it because it was out of stock. So this has like a little sack on the end of it. Which you use to pump it up quickly. And I was doing it wrong. I didn't read the instructions at first. Pretty funny. You just fill it like this. It takes like four or five good fills with this bag and then it's done. And I've had, this is like my third sleeping pad and this is by far the most comfortable and fastest to uh, blow up. Um, at least for being on a bike. I know they have like those foam ones but those are a real pain in the ass to carry across the country. But I did get the big one. This is the Etherlite XL. Was that three? Yeah, about four or five and it's, it's filled up. The mosquitoes are coming after me now, guys. After this, I'm gonna go take a shower. We've been fortunate enough that this campground has uh, showers. So, I'm gonna go use that, because I'm filthy. There's nothing worse than riding all day and having a baby wipe, but it's better than nothing. There we go, it's, it's like four and a half. I'm a heavy guy, so I like to fill it up until it kind of pops off. I'm sure there's a, a PSI rating. There. And that's it. It's like a fucking full on air mattress, man. It's a luxury. But it doesn't weigh that much, so it's not that big of a deal to carry it. Alright. Throw this guy in here. it up we don't want to bug breach 
And this is my sleeping bag. It's just in a Sea to Summit, Summit bag. Uh, I don't know what, this is an REI sleeping bag as well. It's, it's kind of a light one, but I'm not sure which one it is. It's definitely a down, it's a down bag. It's been way too hot to really sleep in them. I'm kind of a hot sleeper, so I don't usually need it, but um, it's nice to have something extra to lay on. And then Matthew B gifted me these. These are these little pads. That you fill up really quickly. And you can use them for a pillow. So I use one as a pillow. And then I put the other one outside to sit on. And I just throw all this other stuff in here. And close it. And that's my camping setup. Whew. Hopefully you enjoyed this update. We're gonna have more updates along the way. Like I said, we're already in Michigan. Um, we are crossing um, the Lake Michigan from Muskegon and going into Wisconsin. So gonna try to update you guys about once a week or so. So I'll see you on the next update. Peace.